Welcome to the Gab Talks by the Independent Press Award. I'm your hostess, Gabby Olzak. Joining us today is Carlo Pietro Sanfilippo, author of Afterlife, Waking Up from My American Dream. Afterlife was awarded a distinguished favorite in the 2022 Independent Press Award and 2021 New York City Big Book Award in Personal Growth. Carlo, a father of two sons, hails from St. Louis, Missouri. A financial planner for 26 years, Carlo builds furniture, does improv, hosts a blog and a podcast, studies Italian, travels, and oh yes, he writes. Congratulations, Carlo, and welcome to The Gab. Thanks so much, Gabby. It's great to be here. So um, I loved Afterlife. It was really inspirational. It was interesting. It was relatable. And best of all, it wasn't preachy at all. Um, so tell us, Carla, what does living on purpose mean? You know, when, when we're kids, or people ask children over and over again, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, you know, then that ultimately turns into kids turning into some profession that requires you to, to you know, earn money to do all the American dream kind of things, which are buy a house and have cars and families and all the things that go along with that. And for me, when I went through some of the stuff I talked about in the book, living on purpose meant, well, I'm not going to spend my time and energy figuring out how to just have more things so that maybe one day when I'm 65 or 70, I can do the things that I want to do, which are the things that made me happy and uh, brought me joy when I was when I was a kid. So that's what it means. Well, I, I have to say that a lot of the things that you talked about that made you happy in your book also made me really happy. I, I And I, I was very jealous. And we have a lot of things in common. Um, my goal is to also live in Italy for at least a year. I have told my husband this since the day we met. Um, you've, you've been through, you've had a lot of little journeys along the way. And the beginning of the thread of the new you was when you actually built an entertainment center out of an old mantle for your apartment post-divorce. So how is that a meaningful first step, Carlo? So, uh, I'll give people a little bit of a background. You know, I, I was divorced and in an empty condo with nothing <laughs> except for my books and my clothing and some tools and uh, one piece of furniture that I brought with me. And so I needed, I needed things. And I, I, um, through looking and discovering of what I really wanted to have. And I, I decided that um, it would be fun to build my own things. And for so many years, I had always done what I thought I was supposed to do. And anything I built and did in my old houses or other renovation projects were around the way something was supposed to look. And with this project, uh, I have I looked at this wall and thought, you know, a fireplace ought to be there. And I'm in a condo and there's no fireplaces or chimneys. So I went to this place that had all salvage material and I just stumbled across this, this uh, fireplace mantle. And I thought, I just looked at it and I could see my television in it. And I decided I'm going to turn that into an entertainment center. And uh, this, this guy kind of gave who was a carpenter I, I'm not a carpenter but he like kind of gave me some ideas for how it might work and I brought it home and um I just started working on it and I all of a sudden had this realization that wow this is done when when I like it it's it when it works for me when it looks right when it's functions the way I want to it's done there's no prescribed there's no prescribed end and that opened up this possibility of like wow, what if my whole life was like that? And so that was kind of like a, a first step towards building the life that I wanted. So so as I mentioned, um, you, you had a lot of voyages along the way, a lot of journeys. Throughout the book, you, you advise us to follow the fun. And um, the next part of your thread was improv. And one of the tools that you shared that you learned from improv or part of the improv process was yes and... And that led you to what you call your own personal renaissance in Florence, Italy, one of my favorite cities in the world, where you immersed yourself in the language, the culture. What impact did this have on you and your journey, Carlo? 
um, what impact did being in Italy have on my journey? Yeah, just just taking that step. It's really it's brave. I mean, you went you went really to a foreign country. Yes. Knew some of the language. You took you know, the plunge. <clears throat> I like like many like many Americans, you grow up hearing that you're you're this, you're Italian, you're German, you're Irish mm -hmm. or whatever. And I had, I had grown up with that from my parents. So you're, you know, my, my dad was always reminding me, you're Italian, don't forget you're Italian. But I had no idea what that meant other than whatever cliches and stereotypes that everybody knows. And when I decided I'm going to dive into what what does that mean? And I started with the language and I started with travel and then I went and then I met family over there. And I started peeling back these layers of this culture and art and history. And it just felt, I felt so personally connected to that. And each little step that I took uh, not only revealed pieces of history and culture that I found interesting, but you know, often what we find interesting and fascinating is is something that we like or won't acknowledge about ourselves. So I just, it felt this, like this tandem journey of discovering things about this language and culture, but also rediscovering my own sense of fun and passion and, and I don't know, I hate to say that, I don't, depth or whatever it might be. And so diving into that just, just, just felt invigorating. It, it, it invigorated me, I have to say. It gave me um, more of a desire to do do that and to do it sooner than rather than later, as you recommend in your book. So, okay, so After Life's your debut novel. How did we go from, um, you know, building a mantle to learning a language, to traveling, to immersing yourself in a culture, to going to therapy? How did you, how did you come up with After Life and why did, what was the process like? You know, as I was all the all the way along that process, as I was slowly figuring out, you know, the the furniture was the first step, and I saying yes to myself in 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 a very private way because I not very many people saw that, and then the improv allowed me to step into a more of a sense of fun and 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 um, creativity for myself in a more public way, and then um, as then that you know, unfolded into the the financial planning business that I, I just retired from three months ago or two months ago. Um, as people and friends started seeing changes in me, they started asking questions. Well, how did you do that? And why did you do that? Or how did you decide to take your kids here or there? And and they started noticing differences. And in, in, in I noticed it was even impacting decisions my clients were making. And so I was telling people like in little spoon spoon fed pieces parts and pieces of the journey but i just decided i wanted to write it all down at least for myself so i could kind of look at it all in one in one sweep and see if that might be helpful for other people that i know felt the same way they felt trapped by some kind of prescribed way of life they thought they were supposed to live um you know i have a question about that so as a result the the book was fantastic your trip to italy etc you changed your job, you changed your clothes, you changed your hair. Do we, do we all need to do that, Carlo? What, what, <laughs> like, what, what advice would you give to, let's say um, a kid who's graduating from college is, is taking all of those steps. Next step is to get a job. Should they, should they be making that step or should they, what, what do you, what's your advice to them? You know, it's, you know, it's not about, you know, any of the, it's, you know, the clothing or, or hair or whatever, it's more about, you know, I, I think about that because I have kids that are just kind of at the beginning of that journey. And, and that's what I want my next book to really be about is how do you, how do you take some time to figure out what it is you want to have and be? And so it might be therapy. Mm -hmm. It might be working with a coach. It might be. Um, Which was very helpful to you. You say yeah. that from the very beginning that all of this is not possible without a therapist, without a coach. Mm hmm. And, and we don't often give our self, ourselves space for that in, in society and, and young kids feel so much pressure to, to just jump right into the American dream. And they've been working hard since high school to get into college and then worked all through college so they could get into a career and then they feel all this pressure to buy and have and do all these things, but they've never 
that they don't really maybe feel the space to have the the freedom to to do what they want to do. And so the the biggest advice is not to overcomplicate your life to the point where you can't where you're not free to to travel and do things. Um COVID I think was a great great time for people to take a I I was for a while blogging about that calling to get the grand time out. You know, we're all forced to sit sit and think about our lives. Yes. And um, and all of a sudden we discovered so many people discovered, well, gosh, I can, I can do what I want from home, which that also means then you can do what you want from a van, or you can do it from Italy, or you can do it from this, the mountains or a different place every month if you choose to. But, um, just having the, having the courage to maybe really write down what it is you want and then figure out how do you, how do you work toward that, that, that dream. It, it was courageous. And a lot of the things you did, um, beginning with changing your careers and traveling was very courageous. And I, I read um, in your book, you shared with us that as you expanded your boundaries, it seemed to be contagious, wasn't it? Your boys started to broaden their horizons, which I thought was really wonderful. And don't we all want that for our kids? Um, what, how did, what did that mean for you as a dad? You know, the, the 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 possibility of that is in in one of my therapy sessions one of my uh, the therapist said because I was talking myself into why I needed to stay in my current situation and the therapist you know just advised me that you know you're you're creating an archetype that your kids will will repeat and that that scared the heck out of me and was also a big piece of me really thinking about what what kind of example I'm setting for my kids. Um, and then as, as they started seeing little bits and pieces of, you know, the real me, you know, before we went to Italy, we went to Germany and they got to, I had studied German in high school and college, and they got to see me conversing with people in German and never a thing that they never saw before. And that opened up the possibility for them to travel and speak languages and what that might mean and connect with people. And, you know, what it, it just, it it gives me such great joy of I see I see every single day things that they're doing that they would not have been doing had I been hiding in myself and playing things safely still. Um, I I had a similar experience with my children, as you said during COVID, we were all sort of locked down, and I just thought I'm not going to wait any longer. And my uh, younger son had never been to Europe, and of course the first. Uh, place we thought of taking him was to um, Italy. And we went to Rome. And this is a kid that would be pretty happy if he never left his hometown. But I felt the same as you. It was a beautiful experience. He got to see me speak uh, Italian, which I think he was very proud of, as I'm sure your boys were. And I think it opened his world. It opens his whole world to the possibility that there is something outside of the town and how wonderful, in fact, that is. Um, so, Carlo, in, in all of these <clears throat> experiences and saying yes to new things and trying new things, which one of these experiences did you find the most surprising? Hmm. Or what did you learn about yourself that you found the most surprising that you had forgotten about or that you didn't even know? Hmm. Hmm. That's a tough one. It is. Um, good question. So, hmm. so therapy, you said right from the beginning of the book that therapy helped you so much and that you, you don't believe that it's really possible to do any of this without therapy. That's a hard leap to take. What made you decide, okay, I need that. Okay. Well, you know, so, you know, I, I decided on therapy cause I was in, you know, in the, in the, at the end of, of my marriage. And it looked, it just seemed like a, a helpful tool. And then the most surprising and maybe helpful thing I learned is of part of therapy was just understanding this whole concept of, of shadow, the shadow concept that Carl Jung talks about that, you know, that we all have a pieces of ourselves that we're unable to, or afraid to acknowledge. And they can either be things that were really, really that are very beautiful about ourselves or things that are very maybe ugly or, or painful about ourselves and, and learning and under, learning to understand my shadows and learning how to, 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 to dig them up, whether it was in therapy or on my own with journaling 
was probably the most helpful and surprising thing about myself. You know, the, the things that I admired the most about people living or dead were things that I secretly wanted for myself. You know, these uh, artists that, you know, really read the life about Michelangelo or Caravaggio and these people that traveled all over and did amazing things or, or Ben Franklin, these people that I was, I'm so interested in, they were doing things that I really wanted to do or things that maybe frustrated me about other people were really things that I disliked about myself, about me not doing what I wanted to do. So that learning, learning to understand that concept opened up an insight to myself that still is allowing me to make better or different decisions as I, as I keep moving forward on, on my own journey. So what are you doing now, Carlo, to honor your truth? What, 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 what do you have in store for yourself right now? What are your plans or what are you doing right now? Well, like I said, in March 31st was the end of, you know, my financial planning career. So I'm getting, <laughs> my kids are both kind of at the, you know, transition points with graduating high school and graduating grad school. So I'm making sure that they're in a, in a good space, but the, the first really big adventure I want to do to kind of dive deeper into some of my own passions is um, I'm going to hike on this uh, pilgrimage trail that's in, there's pilgrimage trails all over Europe. I don't know if a lot of people, I had never heard of these. And so they've heard of the Camino del Santiago, but there's a, there's a trail network in Sicily and I'm going to go there in the fall and hike from the West side to the East side of the Island. And I'm going to give myself 30 days and it's a, 21 days if you don't stop. And I'm just going to use this as another opportunity to kind of dive into the language and culture. And, and I'm going in these little villages where tourists generally don't go and get to connect with all kinds of interesting people and places. And um, with no objective other than I just want to do this and I want to have this experience and it's not expensive and it's not flashy and, but I'm excited about it. And that sounds amazing. And, and you're doing it for you instead of like you, you say often in your book, you lived most of your life doing for others or doing what you were supposed to do in it. And now you're living you. So, so who are you now compared to who you were before afterlife, Carlo? You know, I joke around sometimes um, that I, I used to obsess about planning, which makes sense why I went into a career of financial planning. And I was obsessed about controlling and predicting and calculating because I wanted to like, I don't know, win, wh whatever that meant. I wanted to, you know, do my best. And now I've, I've, um, I, I've just, well, as an example, I, I always used to obsess about living to a hundred. I'm obsessed really? about my health and food. I read these books. I'm going to, you know, because I was not, I wasn't, I realized this later that I, I wasn't happy. And so I'm like, well, I need to live and be healthy for a long time so that on the backside of my life, I can do the things I want to do. And I got to stay healthy enough so that when I'm 60 or 70, then I can have fun. And somewhere in the middle of all these changes, uh, one day I was driving around and I realized I hadn't thought about that in a while. And I, I still haven't because I'm happy now. And because um, you're living your life. You're, you're not just living, you're, you're enjoying your life. I'm enjoying, I'm having fun. And, um, Truly, you know, after life, the title came because it's where I felt like my old life was dead. Like I, there was a period of time when I was going to therapy and I, I kind of felt like a ghost, like whoever I was didn't exist, but I was still stuck here in some weird way. And as I slowly picked up the pieces, I began this next life. And I know that maybe it's, maybe that's cliche, but that's truly how it felt. I really felt this period of like, I don't feel like I belong here anymore because I feel like all, all my li old life is is dead except for you know my responsibilities as, as a father, which I, I dove into that and then dove into discovering um, what I'm going to do with this next piece of my life. And isn't it funny? I, I bet you are a much better dad now than you were before. Yeah, I'm. I'm I am. I, I, it feels weird saying you're good at something, but I I, I do feel that way because I'm. I'm trying my best to live the example that I want my kids to, to be able to draw from when I'm telling them now you can be, have, or do whatever you want. And, and they can believe it because you're yeah, doing it. Exactly. And, and you know, what's really 
kind of fun too. Often our kids really don't know who we really are. They think of us as mom and dad, but they don't really know us as people. Like who were we before they were here? And you're really giving your kids a great gift because they really know you as Carlo. It's kind of cool. No, thank you. Uh, it's, it's, it's been fun and uh, it's, it's such a joy. It's such a joy. Yeah, you know, that is a gift. I've, I've had other parents say, oh, I, I, that's neat that you take your kids to Europe. My kids would never like that because they would just want to be looking at their phones or whatever. And it's nice to be able to have that kind of connection with your kids so that, you know, you can maintain a good relationship when, with them as adults. Yes, absolutely. So um, what, what, what do you want people who are reading your book to get out of it? What's your goal? Um, to, to, to pause and look at your life. And it's like, is this, is this what I'm doing? Am I, am I exuberantly happy about Friday and sad about Monday? Am I pouring over my retirement plan, hoping to, you know, to be able to do this or that one day? And I've got, you know, do you have a bucket list that you've put off that you'll, you know, you hope to achieve in 20 years or 30 years, if your health allows, you know, if you keep thinking about those things, figure out how to do it now. And you may not be able to do it tomorrow, but build a five-year plan or 10-year plan and then find find the help and resources to 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 help you with that, whether it's a therapist or coach or, or a financial planner. And it feels great to be able to say that now as someone that's not a financial planner. I'm not asking for <laughs> anyone's business. It's not a commercial, but find some people that can help you in those in your with your health and with your finances and with your personal goals and your emotions. It'll save you years and years of hard work. And, and, and you're not weak for asking for help. Um, agreed. Uh, the book was great. It really was Carlo and uh, bravo your debut book. It was extremely well-written. You seem to have enjoyed the process. Are you working on any of other book projects? Now you mentioned earlier, uh, that you did have an idea. I do. I'm working. I want to dive more into this American dream concept in a way that would be helpful for young people. Um, we're all aware that 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 there's not a lot of uh, financial literacy taught in schools, and there's not a lot done to teach people to know how to be what they want to be when they grow up. And you, there's this $1.8 trillion student loan problem because 18-year-olds that have never been taught, you know, you do these math problems in school where you're taught if train A leaves the city at this speed and train B leaves it at that speed, when will they arrive or whatever it is, but you're not taught of like, if you're going to go to college and you can earn X thousand dollars in this field, you know, they're not, you're not taught how to analyze loans and, and ch college choices. You're taught to pick your dream school because it's pretty and has a nice lunchroom. And then you, you know, a, a 22 year old has six figures of debt when they weren't taught how to understand making that kind of investment in anything or they weren't given the tools and skills to, 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 to understand who they are and what they want to be. So I, I want to, I want to write in, in a way that's maybe helpful for people that are in those beginning stages before they get too buried in the, the materialistic part of the American dream. Hey, and another new uh, career option for you, you should consider going to high schools and sharing your experiences with, uh, high schoolers that are going to college soon. I think that yeah, would be that, valuable. Yeah. And I, 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 again, I, I don't wanna, I don't know another, know another job, but, but if I could create- <laughs> You're done I, with that. You're done with I that. Create, if I could create content that's helpful, that would bring me great joy. Yeah, I, I think I, I would love um, to share a book like, well, this book I'm gonna share with my, definitely my high school age children for sure. And um, I am also going to be reaching out to you, Carlo, about your contacts in Florence, because uh, that is on my bucket list sooner rather than later. I, I'm teaching myself Italian, but I think I need to get to the next level. So, oh, I've got, um, yeah, I got a, some good, 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 good resources for you there. I, I, I know you do. So how can listeners find out more about you and your work and your blogs and your podcasts? So everything is just at carloblog.com uh, that you can find my my podcast and the things I've written and I'm slowly building more video content. So um, that's that's where that's kind of the hub for everything. And then they can, and then that's got all the links to my various social media sites. So I know some people like LinkedIn, some people like Instagram, and so you can find all the links there for for whatever I'm doing. 
That sounds fantastic. And who knows, we might be distant cousins, Carlo. You never know because I have family in Sicily too. Yeah, it's not a big island, so you never know. Exactly. You never know. <laughs> well, Carlo, thank you so much for joining us today. This is Gabby Olzak of the Gab Talks. Join us next week when we speak with C.K. Donnelly of the Kendera Saga. Until next time, keep on reading.